The first time I saw this, I hated it. But after sleeping on it, I changed my mind completely and now I love it and even think it's a genius ending. You see, I hated this scene for feeling out of character at first, but I realized it's actually the most in-character reaction for Tetsu that I can imagine. And no, it's not only because this guy was kinda right. Tetsu is a protector and as the setup of the story suggests, he has no limits when it comes to what he's willing to do when protecting his family. He is however not a hardened criminal, he isn't a heartless monster and I would even argue throughout the show he can be somewhat pathetic. But that same weakness is turned into strength because while everyone perceives him as a meek and harmless guy, he is quite cunning and when push comes to shove, he pushes himself quite hard. And that leads us towards the climax of the show. Tetsu is tired, very tired, and he's happy it's finally over. Or well, apart from him having to live with the burden of two lives on his hands. He is so tired in fact that he can't even make it home but instead falls asleep in his daughter's apartment on the way there. Now I'm sorry if you find me repeating this redundant, but it's important to understand how Tetsu is feeling as the climax approaches. Tetsu has had enough when he realizes he would have to kill a third person, understanding that it would be too much for his soul to carry. So instead he tries to confess. I wish to confess. Trying to convince the father that he will report himself and it will be solved. Even going as far as saying that it's okay if he wants to kill him. However, as I've said before, Tetsu is a protector and upon realizing that his family will be killed, he feels forced to act and takes actions into his own hands. And this fight screams desperation from start to finish for both parties and you could go on a separate rant about the amazing animation and direction here conveying these emotions. But for now, I want you to take with you two key events. One, when the police do show up, he decides to not report himself, and two, he kills one more person. And as he's disposing of the evidence, he wonders if this will ever end. How far will it go? Will it ever be over? He asks if he can ever be forgiven, looking into the sky, seemingly searching for a higher power's approval. But with the thunder kicking in, it probably means the man upstairs is not too happy with Tetsu at the moment. Then we cut to him walking home, and he is forgiven. Not literally, because you know she helped him, so she is not the one to offer forgiveness. But from a larger perspective, even with all he has done, someone still loves him. And in this story, that plays the role of a form of forgiveness, saving his soul from snapping completely, even if he is becoming a bit unhinged as we will see later in the final seconds. But for now, he gets back home and everything seems normal, for the most part at least. You could say Tetsu is lured into a false sense of security. And that's when the typhoon is announced. God has gone from showing his displeasure with thunder and rain to literally going after him with a typhoon. And that's when this phase comes in. It's a mix of realization that his crime will never end, that once he crossed that line there was no way back and Tetsu now accepting the challenge from God himself to protect his family at all costs and if to quote a modern poet saying to God himself try me bitch and with that Tetsu has chosen his family over everything even God the screen fades to black and we can only assume the horrors of that showdown Speaking of horror, click here to see me try and make Yunji Ito's latest anime scary and of course find out if I succeed. As usual, share with a friend or use the affiliate link below to help support the channel. With that said, bye!